Hey guys, Christina here, and today I have the Good and the Beautiful's Space Science, the Wonders of the Universe Unit Study. And our family recently completed this, so I wanted to share with you our experience with it and a look at it. So if you're new here, we have five children. They're currently two, five, eight, nine, and 11. And so that's the toddler plus kindergarten, grade two, grade three, and grade six. So I'll kind of go through everything and I'll show you their binders and how we made it work for multiple ages and what the work kind of looked like for those different ages. So I will turn it around and give you a quick look here. So whether you print the PDF yourself or you purchase the actual papers from the company, it does not come bound. It's completely loose and the reason for that is because there's a lot of things that you're going to be cutting out from it and I'll show you all of this in just a minute. So what I did was I actually laminated the front cover and just the back one and I spiral bound it and that's because it's going to last longer this way I am hoping to use it again in the future and so I wanted it to stay so I'll give you a quick look in here so there are 16 units or lessons um, 95 pages here you can kind of see the overview we did a lesson a week that's what worked really well for us there's unit information about it Supplies you need broken down by each lesson, which is very helpful. And some notes. And then here is the vocabulary. So I like to do is I like to, wherever I took something out of the package, I just print it in black and white, double-sided, and keep it in the book in the same order so I know where things go. So all of this came at the front. And so these are the original ones. Again, I cut and laminated them because we're hoping to use this unit again. So these are some of the pages here, the uh, vocabulary. And these are the things that you use on your science wall. We just put them up on our wall with some sticky tack and then later I put them on a whiteboard with some magnets. You can see all of that here. These are the planet cards, which I have right here. And this bag here. So again, this is the way it comes. It comes in color. I've cut it and I've laminated them, but then I've printed the black and white double-sided to keep track. So each lesson is set up the same way. It gives you the title, the objective, preparation and supplies needed, and then it goes through and it tells you what to do. Whenever you see something like that, that's the vocabulary cards. This is for the science journal, which I'll show you my kids in a minute. And again, it's just exactly the same. This was a Milky Way game. And I probably should have opened all these bags ahead of time. But again, they came all pretty and in color like this. I just printed the black and white and I laminated it so we can keep it and use it again. This is one of the sheets that um, you just like put them on like that. So I just kept that in there. There's some pictures that you show kids different parts and then here's on to the next lesson so I'll give you a quick flip through <laughs> flip through if I can talk of the rest of it here so that's what that book looks like I'll show you the rest of these so these are the mini books and what I did was I bound them at the top and I laminated them two pages together so you could just flip it up like this I have since seen people laminate all of the mini books on one larger coil and I think I actually like that better so in the future I would probably bind them all just on a larger coil with like a separator in between but those are all the mini books so you can see why it doesn't come pre-bound because you do have prep to do in the beginning and you do not need to bind them you can just staple them like they suggest but again I wanted them to stay good for the future and through kids so then there are a few things that you actually either print or photocopy. And so I just kept the extra pages here because it's easy for me to photocopy them when they're all here. And then again, I have a copy in there so I know where they go. And I'll show you this when I go through my kids' uh, folders in a minute. So there's those. There's also these cards here. These were... Um, you have to fill in the dates of different space events. <laughs> if I can get them out, there we go. So 
So you filled in the dates there. And again, I laminated them and we had these up on our wall for a while. Now I am Canadian. And so we looked up some Canadian information during this unit because a lot of this is focused on American and we wanted to know like the Canadian perspective. So those are them. Now I keep all this in just this really simple poly zip envelope. It's just super basic, but everything, including the book, fits in here, and that's good for while you're using it to keep things together, and then again while it's stored in between using it with children. So here's a look at it all in the, the folder here. Um, it's the other reason I like to use the kind of binded coils instead of like a three ring binder is because it's much narrower, it's much smaller, and it's all done and put away there. So here is a look at my kids' science journals, or what we just called binders. Um, the pages are a little out of order, but this is my five-year-old, this is my eight-year-old, my nine-year-old, and my um, 11-year-old. So again, kindergarten, grade three, grade four, and grade six. So I'll give you a quick flip through. So my daughter did participate, but not in everything. She wrote Caitlin and Papa and Poco, not sure, <laughs> but she colored the picture. For this activity, she drew the pictures and we wrote down what she was drawing. And then for these, she would draw the picture and we would write the name and the information for her. So you can see kind of what a five-year-old's work would look like there. And that's the last of her pages. All right, so this is the next one. And he did a little bit more assignments. So you can see he did like the space timeline. His looked like here. So you can see he did a lot more writing. This is his uh, picture there. This is his planet card little keeper. And his cards here, he wrote himself and colored the end of his and then my other son he liked to uh, he made it a little bit more like space which is pretty cool and so you can see his here what his look like and then his pages here So we actually didn't do, there was an activity to do this part, none of us did that part, just the writing part. There we go. So my oldest son, I had him do some of the like extension or extra activities because he is in grade six and he's very capable of doing them. So he has definitely more than his siblings. You can see like he had to define these words and give a little explanation. They also had charting the moon was one activity, an Apollo timeline, some more words, Haley's Comet, again that same one, Voyager 2, so it's his Mars one. These are his planet cards, you can see they're a little bit more tidy. And then he also did a writing assignment as well. So you can see he did quite a bit more and that's one of the ways we made it work for multiple ages at the same time. So with the unit there's this book that's not required but it's recommended. It's Along Came Galileo by I think it's Janine Bendick. I think that's how you say it. And I was actually really sick when it was time to read this book and so my husband read this with the kids and they said it was okay. They enjoyed it. I have not read all of it yet. so. Um, I think it was good to include. It definitely gave them more information. And then there was a video, A Year in Space, that was recommended with one of the units that we watched that we really enjoyed. And the CD that we got from our library actually had a second uh, documentary with it about kind of the after effects and what the astronauts were training for now to go back into space. So those were really good uh, resources that came with the unit that we used. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we added some other things in. So we read this book here. This is Space Explorers, The Magic School Bus, 
Really simple and basic, but it was a good way to reinforce and use some of our read aloud time for that. And then we had a whole bunch of books here. I'll show you these ones first. Just on different topics. And we had these on hand, and these were more for like my kindergartner to kind of go through and look at. But the older kids had a look at some of them as well. We had this one here, and then we have this book as well. And then we did take out quite a few resources from our library. My children also speak varying degrees of French, and so they read some of the books in French as well, um, like on different planets or on comets, on the moon, just to reinforce the French part and to mix it in and make it work as well. And then I also read To the Moon by Jeffrey Kluger, and then I had my 11-year-old read it. And I think I really enjoyed it, really, really enjoyed it. My 11-year-old, he said it was okay. I think he might have been a little young for it, but that was definitely a great resource. It's about Apollo 8 and the trip to the moon. Um, I have my little list here. So then we did some other things too. There was one link in the course about constellations that wasn't working. I think the website's not there anymore. So we actually, we use Skyview Light, and it's just an app you got on your phone and it's free and it's really cool. You can kind of just move it around and it tells you what planets are where and where they're gonna be later in the day and what stars are part of where and which constellations. So that was really cool. I definitely recommend adding that in. We also picked up a kit from Michael's with the like the glow-in-the-dark stars and the planets that hang and we put the stars in two of the kids rooms and the other kids my oldest boys my husband put the sun and the planets up and he did it to scale except for I think Neptune maybe Neptune yeah and Uranus the room wasn't big enough but the rest of them are to scale which was really cool to see and to actually see that there's one activity that's recommended where you actually use chalk to draw out on the sidewalk kind of distance um, but it's winter and we had early snow and so we weren't able to do that. So that was really cool. <coughs> Excuse me. Another one we did was Oreo moon phases. It just made it a little bit more fun. And then we did the recommended Marshmallow Big Dipper. And then I had my kids actually do another constellation each. And this activity, like all the activities we did, worked for all of the ages of my kids, which was really great. My two-year-old's always around when we're doing these things as well. And we also picked up Professor Noggin's Space. It's like a trivia game, and so we've played that as well. I think that was everything that we added in. Oh, we also watched Apollo 13. Um, it is not for young children. You'd need to preview it. It's a video our family has seen before, and we enjoy, and we can kind of fast forward a few sections if we need to. But we watched that one as well. So overall, we really enjoyed using this. It was really easy to make it work for the multiple ages that I had and how they could all do something, even if their level of understanding or their writing or whatnot, reading was very varied. So it's really nice whenever we can kind of pull a resource and use it as a family together. It's quite simple, it's quite straightforward, it's very affordable. So definitely it was a good experience for us and we really enjoyed using the space unit. If you have any questions or comments, if you've used this before, go ahead and let me know down below what you thought of it. Otherwise, though, I hope this finds you having a great day. Take care.